Hey everyone, rather than go here and here, back with more Rome to the War Julii campaign. So, with the Gallic Wars, I seem to have overreached myself a bit. This seems like they can easily just push me back and I'll have to withdraw from the fight. In general, I should definitely have left one more family member behind. I did not need all three of these heavy cav units over here. Carthage has not put up as much of a fight as I was expecting. And Gaulus put up more of one. So I should have left one more unit of cavalry here. Maybe just waited a turn for these two at Stadi. But there are no mercs to buy, like no easy way out of this problem, so... I think I just have to withdraw from this fight and I'll probably be fine in the Gallic Wars, but I don't really know how this is going to play out. Definitely should have played this slightly differently. And speaking of misplays, uh, assuming that the remaster hasn't fixed this, I could have just sent the cavalry ahead to start the siege because they have more movement, and then had the rest of the army join up and provide the siege points to actually build the equipment. So this should be under siege this turn, and that's just a misplay for me because I've not played Rome Total War in a while. Not fully readjusted to all the kind of gaming mechanics. Anyway, we had finished the turn at the end of part one, so let's start turn six. Hey, it's Numidia. I was thinking I'd have to make a diplomat at some point to go talk to them. Greetings. Uh, no. Quite the opposite. I don't want your map information. I want to sell you my own. There we go. Uh, let's see what they'll say for an actual payment. Yeah, 930 is fantastic. Our thanks. By any chance, would you be willing to sign up for an we alliance? See no benefit to us. I kind of expected that, but I'm not happy about it. Having an alliance with Numidia would mean I never really have to worry about the African interior. I sort of expect to go to war with them at some point, but hopefully it'll be a long, long time in the future. Orders. Wait. Gaul just didn't do anything. They just left to go conquer this rebel town, I guess? Because they went north and I've seen them pull back, so they must have immediately went into fog of war? That's very strange. General, I mean, don't look a gift horse in the mouth, so... Let's start the siege. In terms of buildings, I need to do something in Segesta, which is going to be dirt roads for travel time. And for some reason, Carthage doesn't even have dirt roads, so we'll make them there too. So I've been comparing Hitstadi and Equites, and Equites are actually cheaper, like across the board. 20 less upkeep, 60 less recruitment cost. Or sorry, 60 less upkeep, 20 less recruitment cost. That is shocking. I will absolutely be making some Equites instead of Hestadi, since I'm being given the choice. Imperator. And I will move down to Siege Thapsus. The oh! They don't have walls. That seems like something they should really have considered making. Their faction leader, a single unit of cavalry, and a town militia is not exactly, um ideal for them. Yeah, let's just fight this on the battle map and slowly chip them down with all of our missiles. This is going to be pretty easy. With such confusion in the heavens, it is up to us to forge our own destiny. Those it seems like a really common trend in the war speeches for the Romans is to go on and on about how the priests don't know what they're talking about. I don't think once they have said that the portents were in our favor and that we were going to clearly win according to the priests. their walls and pray for help. I mean, yeah, I'd be cowering too. They're outnumbered like 5 to 1. So looking at the city square, there's only two entrances. So I'm going to deploy over here with the intention of coming in through both entrances eventually. And let's see where they position their starting troops. Going to just move everyone over here to deal with that general. Actually... They don't seem super interested in coming to fight me, so instead... Alright, the general doesn't seem particularly interested in leaving the middle of the town. So my new goal is basically just to get the archers in range and then, you know, see what they do once they start getting pelted. Alright, this is a pretty terrible angle with them having to fire up and over the building. So I'm not sure I'm actually getting anything done here, but it's worth a shot. Oh hey, it's enough to convince them to move. Something's happening. Oh wow, they're just all coming in. In that case, I'll send all of my heavy cav in to go deal with their light cavalry that are for some reason defending the square. This is a very nasty way of fighting this. 
I need them to stop firing before they hit our own people. Yeah, the town militia are coming back to try to deal with it, but that's not great. Yeah, there's no way to get them through. This is just generally nasty. But, I mean, yeah, it's General's Bodyguard in a narrow corridor. What am I going to do? At least they're dealing with the same thing over here. And I can retrain all my Hastati in uh, Carthage. I'm losing Metri REI, but... Well, what are you going to do? Hopefully I can hire some mercenary hoplites in Greece sometime soon. The enemy king has been slaughtered. Let us hope he does not poison the carrion birds. Uh, I'm just going to set it to very fast at this point because it's just a matter of time. Yeah, losing 200 doesn't feel good, but it's almost all easily replaceable infantry, which is... Kind of, I guess, obvious since all I have is easily replaceable infantry. Something it used to say in the old version of the game was amongst governed settlements. They would only go to settlements with uh, actual governors present. I wonder if it says this differently because I don't have any governors, or if maybe it never is distributed by governors. Or maybe that still works mechanically the same way, but it still has, you know, the same, or it has new text despite old mechanics. Regardless, though, um, Patavium is going to be the city I try to get into a huge city if I try to get anything into a huge city, which I don't have yet. So I'm just going to exterminate this for happiness reasons. Because I can't even enslave it to the city I would want to be growing anyway. Wait. Uh, I was going to talk about my plan for this army and going southeast, but this is Rebels. I thought Carthage started with this city. Man, Rome Total Realism is really messing with my memory of the game map. Okay, so we're going back north immediately then. I can't retrain anything here. Should probably build a wooden fence in case Carthage is lurking around somewhere with some hidden army or another. I wouldn't mind sticking around for a turn to try to build an Equites. And in fact, we don't have any movement left, so we have to anyways. That's great. It still just blows my mind that Equites are objectively cheaper than Hastati when cavalry is so fucking good in this game. I guess we'll be building a lot more Hestat a lot less Hestati and a lot more Equites than I remember. Brinkapes will probably at least be worth it, though. Your Honor. Have this spy come check out the Gallic army. It's, you know, yes, warbands. What else would it be? Don't know why he didn't respond defensively and just kept going east. Gonna have this diplomat continue his trek into the Balkans to find some civilized people to trade with. And I think that's it for the turn. Um... Next turn, these guys are going to come north and get on the boat, at which point I'm going to repair the boat and build a new one and send these guys all over. I want to build a second boat so that I can safely have it on the seas and not expect to lose it. I might not bother, though. I might go straight to Lily Bay, um, because I'll have to build peasants to garrison the city is what I'm realizing. Plus one command and commanding infantry. Nice. Oh, I'm glad I always double check everything at the end of the turn. I haven't made Hestati yet. Which I kind of just need to be pumping these out non-stop for the entire campaign. Not a problem I have down here, though. Already making Equites in both cities. And that'll be it for turn 6, I think. <laughs> Did Carthage and Gaul just make an alliance? That's adorable. <laughs> Okay, so looking at this, it's only one boat. Uh, they're way, way too unhappy right now, so I have to lower the tax rate. And let's build public order bonus to law. This place is never really growing. I just want to make sure it's not corrupt. Maximize my economy. This is all obviously just going forward to get on the boats. And it looks like I have no choice but to build another boat since, you know... Carthage is trying to stop me from leaving. And then next turn I'll build a peasant in Carthage. And put everyone on the boats. First, before we do anything else, let's deal with this siege. It's just two warbands. This is going to be very easy. It's still baffling to me this city didn't have a defense rally. I guess maybe the AI thought it couldn't handle it. 
And I'm not going to be fighting a night battle. I always want to fight night battles to get the night fighter trait so I have plus one command stars at night. But I also always have the missile advantage, which is something that I think night battles make you worse at. I could be remembering that wrong. It could just be bad weather that makes missiles worse. Today we fight against monsters. The goals, they are dangerous, mad, and hairy beyond Wow. Reason. In victory, they are <sighs> We are now, real racist forward. about the goals, aren't we? Alright, let, let's get out of here before we get back to the racism train. Is there anywhere that has less towers next to it? Yeah, this side has one tower missing right here, so this is a better place to go in. And now we're just going to start breaking down the wall. Going to take us a little while before we actually do anything. And if they just back off and let me do it, I'm going to walk in right here. But if they try to defend this, I'll just pick the ram up and move down the wall and knock down the gate too. Because they'll never send both units down to try to stop me. But it looks like they have so few, they're just letting me in. Oh, god damn it! I didn't realize they were locked in formation. Uh, well, there goes four people who easily could be alive. Alright, now just give me a little while while I slowly work my way into the city. Oh, they're actually coming out. I was not expecting this. Regardless, the fact they're charging in won't do them much good. The gods yeah. Fill the heart of the enemy general with fear. Now he flees the field like a coward. I don't know what's happening with these Astati. They seem to be just running in very, largely random directions. No, no, please stop. Please stop. Your life is valuable to me. I know it might not seem like that sometimes, but I'm going to need you to not charge into the main square. Everyone's at fire at will. The enemy general flees. Press forward so the spirit of his army is broken too. Honestly, at this point, I'm just going to put everyone into charge on that. Yeah, the enemy general dies. They rout because they're overnumbered. Overnumbered, outnumbered. And we just end battle here because you never ever continue battle in sieges. We lost 20 men. That's kind of outrageously good for how bad the situation looked at the end of uh, turn 5. I'll take it, though. That's fantastic for us. And we're going to occupy Batavion because Batavion, if you go into its details, has a... Where is it? Base farming level of 7%, which not many cities in the game have. You can see that Carthage has a base farming level of 7 as well, and then most of these other cities have 2-4%. to 4%. Uh, So Batavion is very good at growing quickly, and unlike Carthage, I don't need to exterminate it just to hold the city. I'm actually just going to recruit the peasants and leave immediately. I don't want anyone to stay here to be retrained. And if I just drop taxes to normal and immediately make a shrine to probably Ceres, well, definitely Ceres, the city needs to grow. That will sort out their happiness issues. Whole army gets together and leaves, and we're going to go here, wait in the woods. They're going to come reinforce us in the woods. Oh, shit. Uh, Amelius Julius is this person's son, so I think he shows up in my capital since he was in the field. No, he's in Segesta. I have no idea why he's in Sagasta, but I'm going to send him to the rally point where he can hang out with these guys for a turn. Having more generals down here, however, is fantastic. Yeah, that was Carthage and Gaul making alliance. That's adorable. As always, I'll continue spamming out Hastati in these two cities. My armies just aren't big enough to stop yet. I've already handled my infrastructure down here. Not quite. I need to do something in Carthage. I'm actually going to make a Legion Barracks in Carthage, knowing that eventually I need to be making Prinka base here for a war with Numidia. But that's a long ways off, and I'll need population to do it, so I'm going to make the farms first. All three of these cities need to make something, make a trader over a barracks that lets me recruit town militia who are useless, and I'll finally make shrines to Ceres in these two cities. So at this point I've seen all their armies around here, they have their faction heir, a general, two warbands, three warbands, 
So two heavy cav, five infantry. It's not trash, but it's not good either, and we can definitely deal with this, even without the reinforcements. He's not even getting the rebel settlement, he's just over here hanging out. That seems pretty bad for them. Awaiting your command. We are almost to Macedon, who is, like, not at war with the Broody Eye, but they sure look like they want to be at war with them. Or rather, the Broody Eye sure look like they want to be at war with the Macedonians. I feel like I'm forgetting something this turn, but this also looks like I've done everything I need to do. So, let's get on with it. Let us now talk reasonably. <laughs> 5500's a fucking lot. Um, I wonder... I wonder if there is any meaningful diplomacy added to this game. Actually, yeah, I'll stop here. I was planning on conquering Lily Biom on my way back, and probably careless too, but I'll just go straight to the Balkans instead. I'll just take this money and get out of here. Yeah, I'll take that. I'm I'll done. Suitable husband. I mean, I'll take it. Any family member is better than no family member. Star Carthage decided to go to war with Spain, or rather Spain decided to dowel Carthage. The Seleucids are getting dogpiled, and my ceasefire went through. Also, I'm officially the largest faction. I am going to recruit a unit of peasants. Put everyone except for one unit on the boats. They're still just fine. Yeah, I can get away with much higher taxes here. In fact, I can get away with very high taxes, and I'm going to. And I'm going to start making my way to the Balkans. Oh, also, uh, I didn't really focus on it, but I did pick up that new general in Carthage. Oh, he's finally coming back. Let's look at him. It is two warbands in the middle, just like I said forever ago. Yeah, I'm just going to unite these armies and lay siege to Mediolanum. I'm not going to worry too much about the idea that he could siege this or this stat could siege that. It is a problem that I'm not happy about, but also it's just not the biggest deal in the world. And there's a good chance they're going to pull back to try to protect Mediolanum anyway. So, as always, two more units of Astati. Nothing else really needs to be built anywhere, so I will go into the construction tab and start seeing what needs to be done. I think I just need to build a militia barracks here, or a stables, one of the two, just so that I can start, you know, producing units here to eventually join up with this army and push into the north of the Balkans. Yeah, I'm going to immediately go for the stables there. It's so hard for me to say RMNM. RMNM. Every time I try to say it, it's just like my tongue trips over itself because I'm trying to say it. Arminium instead of Ariminum. It's awful. I'll build this because it's the only infrastructure I can build. Oh, you're actually very upset with me. Why have you gotten so angry all of a sudden? Let's just chill on the taxes a bit and build another tier of the temple. And there's really nothing to be done in Segesta. Like, they might get sieged. There's no way to fix that. The population in this city is only 730, so maybe chill on recruiting units and build some farms. Okay, so I'm close to the point where I can finally start Fort Wall in the Alps, and I'm also at the point where there's really nowhere for the Scipii to go. If they fail this siege somehow, I'll probably just Dow to take Syracuse because the land is so good. Oh, um, I should have mentioned this. At the beginning of the video, there were some mistakes I made. I think I mentioned that I could have moved my cavalry ahead here, started the siege, and then moved my infantry up to catch up to them. So I could have just taken Batavium a turn faster. But a big mistake I made is, uh, on the first video I said I probably couldn't conquer this because I didn't have enough movement to go from here to there in one turn, which would leave me at sea and stranded. I actually could totally have conquered that. I didn't realize I could just drop my troops off but not attack, then attack the next turn, get on the boats, and go over. So I could easily have taken Careless when I was doing the opening of this. I just didn't. Just misplayed. It's just a thing where I'm getting back into the swing of Rome and I'm not fully comfortable yet. There's a lot of like small gamey things that I could be doing to optimize my gameplay. At least I'm selling map information and trade lights like a complete asshole. 
So let's just ask them to pay us a solid, you know, two thousand dollars. Would you for trade rights on map Yeah, four hundred and ten. That's oh, thanks. you know, that's sort of like two thousand. And I'm not going to worry about trying to find the Greeks. I'm just going to head straight north to uh, Thrace and Dacia. Because I'm going to be dowing the Greeks very soon. Even if I don't do it for Syracuse, I'll be doing it for Sparta. So, no reason to stick around there. Alright, that's the turn. And they've got a decently large stack now. They've actually brought in a general from somewhere to command. If they take Segesta, I honestly don't care. That city is worthless. It's basically a fort wall for my actual cities that just happens to have income. I didn't realize how little I cared about Segesta until it actually came under siege. I was like, yeah, you know, it happens. It'd be slightly inconvenient to have to conquer that back. Okay, quick check of things. Senate office is assigned. Wow. I feel so slighted. Wait, really? I guess Arim I guess Ariminum was also very unhappy and I just wasn't paying attention. Well, you know, not exactly optimal. I can't believe... Wait, Gaul's conquering something somewhere? Probably this rebel settlement, right? There's got to be more than one rebel settlement, though, since I took a city from them. Macedon and the Greeks finally went to war. Various unreturned reports. So let's quickly check buildings everywhere, make sure I don't need to recruit. Aside from training up a new Hetstadi and Aredium, that's all of my infrastructure is already done. I'm not going to lie. This massive rebel stack that just spawns in the middle of my armies doesn't feel great. This makes it kind of difficult to reinforce. But first things first, let's deal with this. Did I not construct siege weaponry last year? <laughs> oh, okay. I'm having a bad start to the day. I'm just going to load my end of turn save and remedy some of these mistakes. So, this time around, let's drop this to high tax rate and let's actually build our siege weaponry. Jesus. Okay. Hopefully you don't play so badly that I need to reload too often. It's one thing to be out of practice with Rome to a war and another to be just actively terrible. Alright, and now that I've prevented my cities from rioting for literally no reason, I can avoid having that rebel stack here as well. The rest of this turn looks pretty straightforward. Syracuse did get conquered, so we're just sailing past and towards the Balkans. I'm debating if I want to conquer Crete first, and I don't. I want to go straight for Sparta. I'm not going to bother building this barracks yet. I have a long time to build it, and it might get interrupted and waste my money trying to build something that doesn't happen. And before I end this video, I'm going to fight these two battles. So let's get to it. And this is just sad. This is going to be a walkover. The gods have surely smiled upon us. The omens are so new. Oh my god. So in our favor Speak of I the devil. Describe them all and still have time for a battle today. It's a battle with good the omens. I don't need all these battering rams. They're outnumbered just kind of comically. I do feel kind of bad for this unit of town guard just being massacred by the skirmisher warband, but you know, that's their job. The gods have smiled on us today. The walls are broken. Okay. Be ordered forward. And I just want to immediately push forward with my Hastati to prevent these guys from standing around and continuing to attack. Same with these generals. And start moving everyone in position to get through the gates. Okay, it looks like we finally have movement. The general wants to come out and try to stop this. Stop what you're doing, fire at will, and have my cavalry charge. And I'm just going to move all of this all the way in. And there should be more than enough to handle the general and then what little warband is left to defend. Like, I, I don't know about charging your general just head on into four units of infantry. This seems suboptimal to say the least. Their general's still alive and still pushing through. Still up a surprising number of casualties. The enemy general is slain, <laughs> and now he's made The graphics heroes. might be better, but their it's animations are still pretty back. terrible. <laughs> and now we just increase speed massively as we slowly grind this warband to death. We, got to be praised. Not <sighs> we have this nasty habit of always taking about 200 battle battles? Taking about 200 wounds in every battle. 
or every siege rather, where we just have to grind out a warband. I suppose considering the amount of time that we were fighting a General's Cavalry in that fight though, that's totally fair. Yeah, I think I'm happy with 200 casualties for that. But Iolanum is very unhappy, but I'm going to try to occupy it anyway. And I'm going to try to get rid of some culture penalties by destroying all of this garbage. Repair that and build the population, and build the uh, public order lull shrine. Hop in, lower the tax rate. So it is manageable to make it not rebel. Well, I might just have to deal with rioting for a turn is what it looks like. This is just going to retreat if I hit it. So I'm not sure what I should be doing. These Town Watch are basically useless though, so let's see if we can't get this to not riot. Yeah, okay. So by sending the Town Watch back, we're okay, which means we can afford to send the Hastati. I would much rather send the General. Yeah, okay. And since they're still not rioting, I can send the Hastati as well. Town Guard doing their job. Like, I have to deal with this. It is just going to retreat, but I've got to try. Okay. So I am going to be able to wipe that out. Let's handle my infrastructure now before the end of the turn gets around and I forget about it. This diplomat needs to be moving up towards Dacia and Thrace. Oh, if I had been paying attention, I'd already have talked to Thrace, but it's fine. So the last thing to do this turn is going to be to wipe out the army of Lugatorix, but I'll be doing that in the next video. This has been Rather Incoherent. Like, comment, subscribe, and all that YouTube algorithm jazz. I'll see you around.